hey, 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 what is going on? You are listening and watching Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition, where we are here every Wednesday night on the Crowdcast platform. I am your host, Steve V. This is episode 513, alongside my Tags partner in crime, Cody Marie Stolget. <laughs> how the hell are you doing? Tag team, team, baby. <laughs> Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing really good, actually, because we have got an exciting show ahead a little bit later, a little bit later, y'all. Uh, we are bringing up our special guest, Matt Heft, to the show, who's going to be talking about his ergonomic and aesthetically pleasing adult toys silk Ooh. art and oh my gosh i'm so excited to talk to him about that we have so many questions to get to but we've got a lot to talk about because cody a week from tonight a week from tonight we are going to be live streaming in puerto vallarta and i'm talking about the vacaya mexico resort in puerto vallarta so excited about it are you packed and ready what is going on I am editing right now because, of course, I had so much in that this little suitcase. I only want to take a carry-on because I'm not packing a bunch of, like, bulky clothes. I'm only Speedos and titty things and things like that because I want to be as naked as possible. We're going to be in Mexico. The weather's going to be fabulous. I'm so excited. We're going to have a great time. How, what about you? Are you done packing yet? I'm not done packing because I've got equipment to bring. <laughs> We've got cameras. We oh, have you, got you can have this galore. <laughs> it's like no joke, but that's okay. I'm going to figure it out. Plus, I'm away for a month and I'm also going to be celebrating Thanksgiving in a way. So there's a lot going on. But I decided to bring up one of the bathing suits that I'm going to be wearing. And it's got a peekaboo in the back. What do you think of this? Badge come through. I mean, <laughs> and this is kind of a special one because it's rough skin, but it's uh -huh. the Tom of Finland collection working with rough skin. So you've got rough skin and Tom of Finland. I'm just showing the label because I'm a label whore. Yeah. And I just thought I'd show you that. But yeah, so that's going to be part of my repertoire and super excited. Jin Synth watching us right now is actually joining. He won our Vacaya 2023 Mexico Resort in Puerto Vallarta. He is joining us actually live right now. So he's going to be helping us out with some stuff too. So I cannot wait. And Bryce watching us live because we're in front of a virtual audience says, and you have to pack me in your suitcase. I know. I wish we could pack as many people as we possibly could, but we will be live with this show on in the resort of the Vakaya. And it's we're really excited about it because we're going to be in front of a live studio audience as well as you guys. And it's going to be a little bit different type of show because mm -hmm. while we do this and we're a little bit more talking heads when we do weekly shows of Tags Live, we are going to be in front of a, a live studio audience. And so we want to make it a little bit more interactive. And we've got some really fun things planned. Are you ready for that live audience? That that part I'm a little nervous about, I have to say. I'm used to doing live shows. However, I'm not used to doing this show live in front of a studio audience like <clears throat> The Tonight Show or Johnny Carson or something like that. So it's going to be a new experience for me. I'm excited. We're going to have a wonderful time. We're just going to live on the stage. And that's all we, that's all we need to do. Get our best exactly. lives, right? So keep keep active with us on social media. Follow Cody at Mr. Maurice on Instagram and follow me. I am underscore Steve V because we're going to be documenting from the plane ride at the airport when we get there and the behind the scenes of getting set up for our one of our first in a long time live in front of a studio audience broadcast of tags live so keep active with us because it's going to be a lot of fun and we really want you to be a part of it to see the whole process as we join the whole live hemisphere well yes. 
Also in announcements that we're so excited about is our brand new podcast dropped last week. And we're talking about of a certain age or OACA, O-A-C-A. And we are at episode number two that dropped this morning. And our guest this week is Ivan Quintanilla. Ivan is a travel writer, blogger. He in this episode gives so much insight into the hot spots that you need to look at right now he's talking about destinations where you could save a buck or two he's talking about destination weddings our safety as an lgbtq community and so much more i learned so much more and we asked the quintessential question of a certain age where are people considering retiring and where can you get your most bang for your buck I'm not going to give those away because we want you to listen to it. Of a certain age, OACA, O-A-C-A, is now available. Episode two and one are available wherever you get your podcast. Please, please support the show. It, we are so excited about this endeavor. And any words to say about episode two, Cody, and of a certain age, OACA? It was so exceptional speaking to Ivan because... He's hot, number one. <laughs> Cody had a little crush there. <laughs> I do have a little crush. But also because he gave us so many wonderful tips about how we can be safe while we're traveling, about the next places to go as far as destinations that are up and coming. Just so many wonderful tips and tricks. And it was just amazing conversation. So I, I loved hanging with Ivan. Of a certain age, Owaka, O-A-C-A, wherever you get your podcast, download it now. We are up to episode two. Okay, well, it's time for some thank yous. And the first thank you goes out to last week's special guest on Tags Live, Dr. Chris Bustamante. And he was talking all about these procedures about sexual enhancement that you can consider to do that you just have to visit episode 511 of Tags Live to find out what we were talking about if you missed it. But in the meantime, Cody and I went into the <laughs> office of Dr. Chris Bustamante yesterday and have a, had a couple of procedures done prior to our trip to Mexico. I'm just going to tell about mine first. I yeah. had the Hydra facial. And if you notice my skin's a little bit more hydrated today, it is. But yeah, glowing. I cannot emphasize the hydrofacial. Mainly what it did, it was the most intense facial by Marcos, who was amazing in and of himself. But he took such good care of me here in New York. And one of the things that he did was really just cleanse away and do some really good extractions and exfoliations. And he showed me, Cody, some of the extractions and grime that really exists in all of our faces. And he got mm -hmm. away so many blackheads and just unwanted dead skin cells. And oh. I really think that's the reason why our skin and did a whole rejuvenation process that I think is going to keep my skin glowing. I want to go back. I can only probably afford every six months, but I know, right? <laughs> yeah. But Cody, what did you have done and what are we looking at right now? <laughs> I had a little Botox just around the eyes, darling. <laughs> a little, darling. I probably had. He put, he's out of, he had to order some more supply <laughs> after you. He stuck me so much with so much Botox. I was, <laughs> I was. We're I'm not going to recognize our co-host after I mean, some, after a, a couple of weeks. <laughs> I was like, child, how much did he give you? It was amazing, though. He has such a wonderful bedside manner, and he was so kind and giving. And it was just, I feel already rejuvenated after the procedure and I can't wait to see the results. So I'm going to continue to post about the results and how my face is looking and feeling and all of the wrinkles are good. I'm going to look up 10 times younger in two weeks. Okay. Because it takes well, two weeks. To we're going to have a camera on you every single day on this trip. And <laughs> it's about two weeks when you have the final results of what 
you actually will look like under Botox. Yes. And I cannot wait to see. So I know. Me really too. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other thank yous we want to, of course, shout out to is, you know, we have a Patreon page where you can support Tags Podcast, of course, Tags Live as well. And I wanted to shout out to a couple of recent new subscribers at the sub levels. That's right. Mm. We have sub diva at the sub level. New Patreon member Arnar joined us, and we really want to thank you, Arnar. We see you, we recognize you, and we really thank you for the support. Also joining us at the Diva level, okay, Brendan. Brendan joined us at the Diva level on our Patreon page, and the support really keeps us moving and going forward with three shows a week y'all and you too can become a member and get some extra special sexy perks by joining and grabbing a tier we are also going to be revamping it soon in the new year and you're going to get even more extra special sexy perks so if you want to support us and show some love for what we do you can go to patreon.com forward slash tags podcast and we really see you and appreciate you thank you so much for that yes okay we've got to get into some hot topics and the first one everybody was talking about this on every show you could imagine and it had to do with the recent conversation that went viral where 13 places a group of women absolutely refused to go on a first date and we decided to put it towards the gay test here on tags yeah. live and put some of these to the test so 13 places you should absolutely not take your date to on a first date include number 13 i hop <laughs> number 12 a buffet a red lobster was on okay. the list like Wingstop. Do you know Wingstop? I have heard of Wingstop. I've never actually eaten at Wingstop, though. Sounds like wings, and I, you know how I do with that. I love stuff. wings. Well, though. Buffalo Wild Wings was also on the list, <laughs> and you know I'm not there either. Any fast food <clears throat> chain, I would also put that on my list. Yeah. Um, there was a bunch of things like the Olive Garden Chipotle. I love, Ugh. I love but I would never take a, a, a date there. I can't stand Chipotle, but Chili's, <laughs> ugh, Applebee's, Chili's, I would actually go on this on date if somebody okay. took me to Chili's. I, oh, okay. Truth, truth be told, Cody, when I go home to Fremont, California, where my mom still lives, her and I have like a mom, mother, son date, and we often go to Chili's. I love a good Chili's. The margaritas are great. We get okay. the, the yeah, I love it. Um, no Olive Garden, no. What? Red Lobster, forget it. But it's Italian. It's 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 it, you feel like home when you're Italian. there. It is not <laughs> Italian. I got to my other thing, but um, you know the the number one place to not take a date, according to these thirteen women, was drum roll please, <laughs> Cheesecake Factory, and I was so offended by that one because I actually in L.A. went on a date to the Cheesecake Factory. You? And How old were you? Yes. And this was like a few years ago. And okay. it was somebody oh. that I had worked on a music video with back in the day, a Madonna music video. And we reunited several years later. He's a dance instructor. And we actually had really great sex again. And we just decided to meet at the Grove in LA at the Cheesecake Factory. And it was delicious. And we both got cheesecake. The raspberry white chocolate cheesecake is sublime. And they make really good cocktails. It is another place that I also go with my mom at times, too. But what did you think of this list? And what are some no first dates that you wouldn't go on? Or so, would you just it, go on all of them? <laughs> <laughs> For a first date, I think it's it's something you have to do your best to make a, a good first impression. So I would go to none of these places on a first date because you have to do your best to kind of show who you are and what you're about as far as you have to kind of wine and dine them a little bit to get the draw to get the draws number one <laughs> <laughs> so i wouldn't go to none of these places the cheesecake factory i would take somebody i probably took joe there uh, when we were two years in 
because it's something that you do when you're away and in a rural place like out in the suburbs or something like that. So I do think that some of these places I would go out on a date with, but I don't think it's something that you would I should do on a on a first date. On a first date, you should be sitting down and being waited on. And it, there should be an air of luxury when you go on a first date. That's how I feel. I like how you feel on that. And I also think that depending on where you're at, you might not have that many options. So these might be some of your options. I listed some of the ones that I like. Chipotle, no, absolutely not. But like where we live, can you hear me, Cody? Yeah, I can hear you. Can yeah. you hear me? I'm, yeah. yeah. Um, like where we live, we are surrounded by so many great restaurants. And we recently, with a group of us, went to an Italian food fest, the Gen... Mm -hmm. Gen Gen San Gennaro food mm -hmm. fest. You could actually do that and have not spend a lot of money. It's not even about spending a lot of money. There's also this thing in New York called Smorgasburg, like Smorgasburg, but Smorgasburg, oh. like the the um, the various areas in New York, mm -hmm. and mostly in spring, summer, fall. But you can that would be a great place because typically they're in a park. And so to me, it's not about spending a lot of money. I'm not throwing my nose up to those types of things. It's just get a little creative. Go on a picnic over going to Chipotle or BBQ. I was and literally about to say BBQs. Or am I taking you to BBQs for our No, birthday? never, never. No, <laughs> date over. I would dump you in a second. But last question before we move on. Do you think a movie is a good place to take a first date to? Yes or no? No, absolutely not. And honestly, I was just thinking about it, and I probably would not even go to a restaurant on a first date because what? oh, yeah, too much. It's it's too much commitment as far as a first oh, date is concerned. A drink, yeah, a drink is nice, and uh, but before you're moving, so right on that, Cody. Because we, I once had a friend of a friend, and he was going on date after date. He had just broken up on this long term relationship, and he was mm -hmm. going after dinner date after dinner date. And I'm like, child, what are you doing? And spending why money. Why do you want to wait? Crazy. Like, yeah. Why do you want to go to dinner at some of my favorite places? Is only fun with some of my favorite people. That's an exactly. equation. It yep. is not fun in. Two minutes into, do you want to drink? Oh, I don't drink. And then I'm like, oh, this is going to be a long <laughs> dinner. <laughs> well, should we get the sea bass? And then they say they want the fried sea bass. And I'm like, oh. Wow. Do they have a burger? Do they have ribs? No. Yeah, I see, no forget it. No. Do not waste your time. We've got a couple comments. Read them for me, please, before we get it. I think we, yeah, read those. So Bryce says a guy took him to, on a date once to a restaurant to treat Bryce to a cup of water, which is <laughs> ridiculous to me. I would have got threw the water in their face and got up and left. Um, Kelly Dad says <laughs> Chili's is surprisingly tasty. Thank which, you so much. Well, you know what? You guys can go on your first date to Chili's. That's perfectly well, we, fine. Maybe with me. we will. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he, Kelly had also says this, this list makes him glad that he gave up women. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> but you see how uh, we have a little bit of similarities as well, right? Which is yeah, kind of interesting. I hear that. So, I mean, yeah. I, is this a, a love connection that I see going on here? I, I love it. <laughs> Justin, also Justin says, says, oh yeah, first, go ahead. The first date should be about getting to know each other, something low key and low commitment like a walk in the park, a drink, something of that nature. And he also goes on to say, dating can be expensive, do an activity, save the second date for something formal like dinner, which is what I agree with. That's what I did when I'm, yes. Can I just I, say that one of my recent first dates was with somebody that I'm still talking to and it was ultimately a hike, a really amazing hike. And he picked me up and he drove me out to this rural part of New Jersey and it was amazing. The hike was strenuous and we worked up a sweat and we laughed and we just had a really great time. We took pictures together, but on the way to the hike, Cody, Mm -hmm. He wanted to get a quick bite, and we did stop at a place that I would never in my right mind stop at. Dunkin was it a Donuts. diner? Dunkin oh, Donuts. Is it? 
<laughs> but here's the thing. He just wanted a snack, and he said, do you want a coffee? I've never wanted Dunkin' Donuts coffee ever, but I said, you know what? Let me just have it. And it was fine. And he made me have a bite of his wrap because he was hungry. Was it fine? I, my point <laughs> is, my point is, and I have a point, I think when you really like somebody, you're interested in somebody, you will bend the rules a little bit. Remember the <laughs> rules? We were just talking about it with Lincoln. I bent them a little bit, and I had a great coffee. I took a bite of... My friend's wrap from Dunkin' Donuts, a place I've never gone to, and we had a great time, and we're still interested in going on future dates. So it also depends on who the person really is. Now, BBQ Mm -hmm. never, Chipotle never. So You know what? I I put my foot down sometimes. What I heard about Dunkin' Donuts is that you will break the rules for the right person. That's what what I got from that story. So I agree with you. Not BBQ. I will see you at BBQs, okay? (laughs) Never. Let's bring on our special guests because we need to if you yes. can bring them oh my goodness hello hello matt heft how in the hell are you he has to unmute his mic oh, oh yeah there he goes he got it all right he's on it how we yes. doing? Yes. Good, Hi, I, just, I, I just want to say that i can also fit in a suitcase so if that position is available <laughs> yeah Hi, where else can you fit? Hey. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, welcome, welcome, Matt Half to the show of Silk Arts, the art of pleasure. You can go to silkarts.com. He's going to be talking about better grip, better control, better angles, better pleasure for adult toys. We're going to get Ooh. all into that. But before we get into that, did you hear our previous conversation and First of all, single and anything about the dating process, would you go to any of these places or do any of these things? So I, I love the thought of a hike, right? Um, it, gets, it gets you moving. Um, there's plenty of time to, to fill with conversation, right? You bring a baguette, you bring some, some, uh, some nice cheese. It doesn't need to be oh. special doesn't need to be expensive that's my take i'm kind of a simple guy though um uh and otherwise restaurants around here i'm trying to find a. well where are you about uh, i'm in uh, new london connecticut so oh, okay. uh, the, okay. you know we, we've got olive garden and chilies which is fine uh but you know i, I want a little hole in the wall taqueria, you know i want to have oh. trouble ordering my food you know <laughs> like that's <laughs> legit okay. So that's my thing. All right, Matt, Matt, you're already speaking my language. I love it. But we need to get into some of what you do. You started Silk Arts. And I was really struck because you also are a tattoo artist. And are you still a, I'm assuming you can I was. Uh, I tattooed for 15 years. uh, And I was, and I loved it. I had a great time. uh, But I was ready for something new. Um, And somehow... Um, you know, I had a client, a great client one day, he, uh, he texted me and asked if I would paint some old school Sailor Jerry tattoos on a butt plug for him, uh, uh, just to keep on his desk. Uh, and I usually, I usually don't take commission work, but that's hilarious. So I said, yes. Um, and I was already looking for, uh, my next direction. Um, and that got my head turning, you know? Um, and so you know, six, eight years later, here we are, I'm doing, I'm not painting toys, because uh, that business model is crazy. Uh, I'm sculpting toys. So, well, so the, 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 the focus is uh, sculptural sex toys rather than anatomical. So oh, I love that. Yeah. Cody, go yeah. ahead and I'll jump in. Oh, yes. We're just so going to rob in our questions. So. No, I totally love that. And I saw that all of your toys are handcrafted. Is each piece unique? Because I want to say to my friends that I have a completely unique piece in my boudoir. Because yeah. if you have a unique yeah. piece, then you need to call it a boudoir, darling. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in that regard, I'm definitely a boutique company, uh, mm-hmm. small handcrafted. Uh, you know, the every toy has to come out of the same mold. Uh, so the, the, the form itself is going to be the same. Uh, but everyone is inherently unique. Uh, the the way that uh, 
you're 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 pouring liquid silicone into a mold. Uh, every blend is going to be different. Every, the marbling is always going to be different. So yeah, they're they're all uh, custom, one of a kind. Fabulous, fabulous yeah, from it. my boudoir. I love it <laughs> for Cody's boudoir. Yeah. Well, one of the things I was struck with when I first found out about you, Silk Arts, was that you're adult toys are so aesthetically pleasing and they're so colorful vibrant colors they they really seem like works of art and where in the past i've have plenty of adult toys but i throw them into a drawer behind the bed in a closet these actually are toys that you would actually want to display talk yeah. about the art process and how you and your process that you really want these to be shown and almost be proud of as works of art as well as functional yeah um so one of the one of the the points that i've always been trying to hit is i you know i want to make a, a sex toy that looks great and feels great i want i want a sex toy that um that i can display on my mantle or I can have on my bedside, you know, uh, that's the level I'm, I'm shooting for here. Um, and so, you know, I, I come up with a concept, you know, I need a dildo or a plug or, you know, whatever, uh, product next product I'm working on. This is the vague shape that I'm working on. Um, and then I'm kind of just getting creative and, and trying to figure out, um, what natural forms can fit into that shape. Uh, and I start playing around and sketching and doing thumbnails and, uh, you never know how it goes. You know, you, you hit that, uh, that creative brain space and, and just kind of play around. Um, so, yeah. Lovely. I love that. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the ergonomic handle and the backlock? What is that all about? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm super curious. Yeah. Um, ergonomics. Sex toys, only recently have sex toys become ergonomic, uh, and it's still a rarity. Um, I, I'm amazed at how few options there are for sex toys. Um, you know, holding a toy like this mm -hmm. is not comfortable, right? Um, <laughs> right. It, and we all do it. Like, why hasn't anybody spent any time to make this a comfortable experience? You know, uh, the the you didn't realize you needed a new pair of shoes, you know, a, an excellent pair of shoes until you put on an excellent pair of shoes. You know, um, if you remember those uh, keyboards from when you were 10, you know, like they're better now. You know, somebody actually spent time on them, designing them. And uh I'm just glad that we're finally getting somewhere with with uh, sex toys finally, you know. So uh, the the thought for the ergonomic, uh, the silk touch ergonomic handle was initially to help the disabled community, um, you know, with limited grip, limited uh, ability. Um, and then I mentioned this concept to uh, my testers abled able-bodied testers and they were like when can i test that you know so i was i didn't realize how extensive this this issue was you know this lack in the industry was so after uh tons of research and development and consulting whatnot uh we came up with i came up with uh the silk touch ergonomic handle um it's going to be tough to get this all in frame but oh uh, but this is one, right? Um, yeah. And, and so, just to break it down really quick, Matt, because yeah, yeah, yeah. for a lot, a lot of people that don't know, the handle is the back piece, and yeah. then separately you sell the actual toy in the yeah. front of it that right. has sort of a suctioned hole, right? That's right. Of, yeah. That you can fit into it. Can you explain that process? Because I was just reading about it yeah. today. Yeah. So this is the handle itself, right? Um, uh, and so this is called a vac lock um, fitting. Uh, and there's the opposite of this in the toy itself, right? Um, and so they slide on. Um, they're pretty, it's a very secure system. Um, uh, and then the handle, um, I mean, in use, obviously, like this is this is a far better range of motion and comfortable grip than, ah. than this. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I was wondering. So 
right. So that's really where it boils down to. Uh, the you can get some other angles, you know, some different positions with the handle. Um, that's dependent on your body and how you move and how you flex and whatnot. But um, I love that yeah. because especially like if you're getting into your toys and the mirror looking at yourself with the mirror and yep. also as we get older too our joints and our hand muscles that's I mean, right we're so on the computer so much i mean i saw you cody yesterday like you were doing something with your joints because you were like yeah. feel i, I feel the same things of. too yeah, yeah. and it's yep. just it's just a product of of a certain age that's yep. right <laughs> that can happen and so I really appreciate what you're doing and what's been the response, I guess, of... Oh, it's been the, great. Yeah. Particularly yeah. with the community that, you know, may find themselves, um, the different communities, I guess. Yeah. Um, so initially I was I was pursuing the disabled community because that's what the product was intention, uh, designed for, right? Um, the The two communities that instantly see this product and know what it's for uh are the fat community and the disabled community um and it's it's a i wouldn't say it's a tough sell a lot of people don't realize that they need a product because they've never worn a great shoe you know what i mean uh, mm -hmm. and so you know we're we're getting there it's a new product it's an innovation so it just is what it is uh aside from that uh the response is great. I mean, I've I've never had a complaint. People, the what keeps coming up in convers in in the reviews is this is a game changer. So uh, I'm just glad. I don't know. I'm glad to make an innovation and and share it with the world. You know, it's it's pretty cool. So yeah. So um, you mentioned your testers. Do you do you test things out yourself or you have oh, testers? Sure. Are you, is there an both. application? Because can you mail me one? I need something. Yeah, to go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk after the show. Uh, yeah, we. I, I have testers. Uh, testers are, are invaluable to me. Um, uh, they they steer me in the right direction when I'm going off path. They give me great ideas. Um, and you know, it's it's a small collection of people that um that communicate very well and promptly uh and they are just invaluable to any i mean any business right but um but especially a a, a boutique sex toy company like me i mean it's it's so important to have them around so to work with them I love it. Well, we are live and Bryce watching us live says the products are so beautiful. I just want to make them art pieces in my house. Functional yeah. art, I would say for sure. And I also think these would make amazing Christmas gifts and so cool. We should really talk about the actual material material you're using. What yeah. are these actually made of? You you have a really great Instagram account that I was following today and really deep diving into where you're pouring, I believe, silicon, but right. colored silicon, and it just looks so delicious. Talk about yeah. the process and what you're using. Yeah, it's a sexy process. Uh, if if you see those videos of of pouring toys, I mean, it's, it's a sensual uh, visual, you know, uh, it, it's Very. cool. So, yeah, the the silicone is uh this is platinum cure silicone, not not tin cure silicone. It's body safe. Um it's the highest quality silicone you can get. Um they're all my products are all lab certified uh body safe. Um I mean that's I I want to say that's industry standard. It's industry industry standard for any legitimate company. Mm -hmm. Um and there's a lot of toxic toys out there jelly dongs anything jelly is terrifying throw it away uh you know there's a lot of scary stuff out there coming out of i'd like to just say china but like also coming out of here you know people don't care um and there's a long legacy of 
questionable business practices in the sex industry, you know? So, and then following um, up on that, on firmness, you have a whole thing on various firmness that you offer with the silicon. Talk about the three levels that you offer. Yeah, I've got soft, medium, and firm. That's double out 30, double out 50, and 10A, shore A hardnesses, uh, if you want to get into the weeds. Uh, and uh, 30, uh, soft and medium are pretty close to each other in the boutique sex toy uh seeing those three options are pretty standard uh 10 is firmer it's a it's if you have a thinner toy uh if you're trying to hit a prostate on it with a dildo then like it's it's a better option um depending on what you're using there's there's a lot of factors that go into like what the right firmness is for your use and for the toy um a lot of it comes down to personal preference. Um, but, uh, yeah. Got yeah, it, we, Cody. We, nice. So, um, we have I only so actually, much time. We want to get all these questions yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> I was really actually curious about, is this, um, strap on, a, a compatible? Is this something that you can use for people that use strap ons? Yeah, I've got, um, m most of my toys are strap on compatible. Um, got a few that aren't um most generally speaking like i can i've got a product to you know uh to meet your needs but uh oh okay in in the future i i intend to expand on those for sure so. okay i have a question but before i do we have we're live and i want to read some of these commentary bryce says matt can you also make any candle molds uh, by one in a heartbeat quick answer to that yeah uh i could i haven't uh i will i will add it to the list and, and think about it yeah Awesome. And Caladad watching us live on this Wednesday night also says, so are these gorgeous pieces meant to be used by a sole user as well as couples? Answer to that. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of ways to have sex. So, you know, however you're having sex, these can fit in, you know. And then my question is one of my favorite pieces that they just come in such vibrant colors was the butt plugs that really talk about that mold shape. It's an unusual shape that, yeah. I mean, the butt plugs that I've seen before are really just like a, I don't know, a knob. Bulbous, yeah. will, bulbous. And yours look a little bit more floral, if I will, in shape, but with those beautiful colors that obviously we talk a lot about on this show that lubricant 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 yeah. and start off smaller and not yeah talk about those and yeah yeah so i actually have one of those here uh this is a oh, i love it this is a this is actually a, a vaginal plug and and the way you can tell is because the base is is uh, a little shorter um this particular model uh in in the uh in the butt plug version has uh has a wider base uh, comes out a bit further and it's in a firmer silicone. Um, uh, and that's just for safety. Um, there will be, I'm working on other models that have less texture. Um, I don't know if you can see it. There's, there's a fair amount of texture on here. Yeah. Um, these, the, the petals of the rose, uh, and to be fair, uh, to be forthright, uh, some folks love that in a firmer silicone to have some ridging, uh, some people don't. Um, that is what it is. You know, you can't, there is no perfect toy for everyone. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, the mold. I love, the, I love the, the safety aspect that you've stated on that too, because I've said on this show before where things can get lost up there. Yeah. I have been a result we gotta be careful. of that. Yeah. Yes, I've been a result of that. So I speak from experience. And so I really love that you've thought of that. Yeah. 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 I think uh it, it's important as a manufacturer, as a as a maker, even a small, you know, boutique company like me, like we 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 try to be good to our our customers. I love my customers, you know. I gotta take care of them. So 
Fabulous. So uh, your motto is better grip, better control, better angle, better pleasure. I'm all yeah. about better pleasure. So tell yeah. us how necessarily the grip and the control and the angle all lead to better, better pleasure. Uh, when you compare it to the classic, right? So again, uh, mm -hmm. this is how a lot of people use their toys, right? Mm -hmm. um, this grip sucks. <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> right. uh, it's not pleasant it's fine if that's all you know and you're and you're capable um but there's a better way you know i mean this grip versus this grip i mean yeah. it's right there you know uh yeah. the, the range of motion uh you know are we going to see a little range, demo? This range of motion <laughs> makes sense. You do that all day. You know, you're picking up bags. It's the same thing. You know, yeah. um, it's just it's just a better way to hold a toy. You know, okay. um, I I don't have much more to say about it than that. You know, fabulous. <laughs> okay, I'm sold. We should also uh, say that you can do custom. Uh, molds for people too because you are a smaller business and that's, I right. think that's what's kind of cool I think what's really and I want you to expand on that but you know when we get a lot of these toys when we go into these adult bookstores or whatever they're really boring looking and yeah. they're probably manufactured in a factory that who knows where maybe China it's yeah. really cool to know that you are here in the states creating these beautiful art pieces that you can even have custom made. Can you speak to the custom made aspect of it? Yeah, I, I do offer uh, custom design and uh, services. Um, they're not cheap. Uh, and the right. waiting list is is long. Uh, mm -hmm. But it is available. Um, Get your uh, Christmas order in early. <laughs> yeah, for next year, yeah. Uh, for next year. But, uh, but I do make, I do do, I do custom colors um so if you go on my website uh you can pick uh one of three classic uh you know house colors um uh, you know we've got purple uh actually there's four i'm sorry i'm missing one um uh there's, there's a pink version too those are house colors uh if if uh you just want to pick one of those that's great um but it's also an option to pick up to five colors and uh, and get a marbled toy, uh, you know, any five colors of the 30 that's available. Um, and it. that's an option. And that's and that's yours. It'll never be made, you know, never be made again. So. Nice. Yes. Nice. We have some people asking about like a promo. We, maybe we'll talk to you offline and see what we can offer our <laughs> yeah. listeners. Yeah. Um, if they're listening to the show and they want something special, but we'll talk to him, Cody. Yeah, no, uh, that's it for me. Do you have anything else, Steve? Yeah. I don't other than, um, you know, cleaning. If you could just speak to this, uh, I was reading a little bit on your website and uh, while you are producing these amazing art pieces, functional art, sexual pieces for us. You can just tap into the importance of cleaning your toys and yeah. what do you recommend? Yeah. Uh, for general use, warm water, warm, warm soapy water is all you really need. Um, if you have, if you're using silicone, um, you have some additional options. You mean silicone uh, lube? Silicone lube, uh, yes. No, I'm sorry. And, but I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, talking about safety uh silicone lube and silicone toys don't mix um oh, so wow. you wanna, yeah so you want to be using a water-based there's some hybrid based that's as a general rule i can't tell you there are some exceptions to that rule based on individual products chemistry um and it's way too big of a topic to get into so it the, we're gonna the, have your back but yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so the, the so, general rule is silicone toys don't mix with silicone lube okay. um yeah i think there's some oil water-based based lube yeah you want to use water-based um yeah you, you shouldn't you shouldn't be using an oil base anyway so uh that's really oh, good to sorry. know i didn't know that so i love that. yeah yeah uh, as far as sanitation goes, um, I mean, if you can get if if you don't have any 
additional needs, then uh, soapy water, it's fine. Um, uh, if you're using toys with multiple partners, of course, you want to, yeah, you can use protection on your toys uh, as an added layer of protection. Um, uh, if you have any smells with silicone toys, with high quality silicone toys, uh, that you trust the manufacturer and you know that they're 100% silicone through and through, uh, you can boil them. You can boil with, uh, you know, just, just water and, and uh, a light detergent. Um, you want to be careful with temperature. Um, you want to start them, start them cool in the pot, let them cool down in the pot. Um, if you have any additional odor, um, I've heard some folks talk about uh, baking them at a low temperature to kill off that odor. Um, so you, there's, there's a bunch of options. Silicone is a wonderful material. So uh, it's it, it can handle a lot of uh, situations. So. Matt Half, love, love, love Silk Arts. So cool. People can go to silks, S I L C A R T S dot com. You can also follow Silk Arts on Instagram at Silk Arts, S I L C A R T S. On threads, I was tagging you today at Silk Arts, S I L C A R T S. We'll list it on the website. The products are gorgeous, Matt. You are onto something. I really love it. I cannot wait to order my own. And yes. yeah, I just love it. So really congratulations on this. I think you're Thank really you so elevating much. you're elevating the adult toy experience and not making it so stigma driven that it has yeah. been in the past. And yeah. I just love what you're doing. So it's really gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's it's uh it's my pleasure to to be here with y'all. So Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, we'll list everything. We'll be in contact, Matt. So maybe we oh, can good. work together soon. Great. Thank, Thank you all. so much. All right all now. Right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Oh my goodness. Love, 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 love. Yes. These toys, Cody, are gorgeous. Absolutely you, stunning. And I don't say that about a, an adult toy ever. <laughs> I'm making Christmas gifts. I'm thinking birthday gifts. Uh -huh. I'm thinking it's going to change the July. way we. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're getting one. You are getting one. I'm. There's so many of them. So, yeah, love. Okay. It was great, and um, for my boudoir, because because the boudoir needs a, a nice <laughs> new toy in it. All right. Bryce says yes. Floral, my rosebud. Absolutely. <laughs> we will continue to update you on that on um all of silk arts and yeah i'm getting mine soon for sure let's get back into hot topics and we had a lot of them that we didn't even get to we sure besides did. that we got to talk about those ex-husbands though i think cody i think so too <laughs> okay <laughs> well there is a ex-husband spanish ex-husbands have gone viral with photos why because they're celebrating their divorce. So this high profile gay couple in Spain has gone viral with photos to celebrate their divorce. And I'm talking about Helio Diaz Zapico. He was a model or is a model actor and influencer with 1 million Instagram followers. He's well known around the globe for Fashion Week and so forth. His husband or former husband, as I should say, Andy McDougall, is a fellow influencer who runs his own PR firm. Well, the two men got married back in 2018. However, posting yesterday from both men, they announced that they're getting divorced. They're divorced, actually. Yeah. Well, it looks like things are all okay because not only did they post and it went viral, but they had a cake that said just divorced. And they wanted everyone to know that they're celebrating with friends this morning. They have officially signed the divorce two years ago. They said when we talked and came to the conclusion that love was over, I remember we went to bed in tears. Quote, we were very sad to become strangers and forget so many adventures, trips, and crazy things together. So we looked into each other's eyes and we both made a promise. Take care of each other and respect each other and let Polandi 
that was their name, Palandi, you know, when like J-Lo and Benifer, it was theirs was Palandi, not in okay. there. Palandi is an uh, amalgamation of their names, like Brangelina, or like I said, um, Benifer. Yes. And so today, two years later, they have shown another side of their rupture. I don't know. This was a really interesting topic for me because we were talking about a former porn star or, a, uh, excuse me, a porn star that had testicular cancer that is in remission mm-hmm. right now that was going through a CAT scan that I was thinking, this is great. We're just following his journey. And I thought he was doing good. So for me, I thought this was an oversharing. You were on the other fence of it in episode 512, Cody. But on this one, I think this is too, like, good for you. So you're divorced, and it didn't work out. We don't need to hear all about this and to have a celebration. To me, there's too many freaking celebrations on when people get together. Then when they decide to have... They are um, engaged. The engagement, mm-hmm. like who? Be- back in the day, we didn't have an engagement party. Now there's a, an engagement party. Then there's like another party, practically. Then there's the bachelor party and the other bachelor party. Then there's the wedding. Then there's it's too much, Cody. It's like so now we need a freaking divorce <laughs> party, and we and if you want to do that with your friends, like. Uh, I don't know. Ew. I mean, yes, life is too short, but no. I hear you as someone just out of a relationship. I can't. And in my notes, it says, say that in Steve's voice, just so you know. <laughs> because I wouldn't go. If you invited me to it, I would. Re- if, and you wouldn't there come? Was an RSV- no, I would not. No. What? Absolutely not. Wow. I would take you, you out. I would take you out to <laughs> well, I would take you out to support you and I have been a good supporter, but I am not going to that engagement. No, sorry. No. Don't invite I mean, there me. wouldn't be one. Yeah, well, because okay, I'm... let's just get it. <laughs> yeah. There wouldn't be one. So don't party. worry about it. <laughs> And because I feel like at the end of love, that is not something that should be celebrated. I don't know if I, I'm just out of a breakup not too long ago myself, and I'm still kind of reeling from it. It's not I'm not going to uh, celebrate it and have a party with, especially not with my partner. Maybe if he was rich and I got a house and a boat and all this money, I would definitely have a party with you and with my a, a lot of other friends out there. But I would not be having it with my ex-partner because it's not a party occasion, I don't feel like. And maybe they're... I love that they're doing this in a mature fashion, but I do not think that this is something that I am capable of because no, no, I, I'm glad they're both single because both of them are cute. They can come my way. How about that? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Moving on. But before we move on, we have somebody that maybe hasn't been listening to us in a second. And Callie Dad says, wait, Cody is single? Since Where have you been, my baby? <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, yes, Cody is currently single, but it's come to my attention, Cody, that I want to ask you the question because mm-hmm. the question came originally from you, but in general, do we give someone another chance? In other words, if you go on a date with somebody and it's okay, or you had a okay time, but maybe you weren't necessarily so enamored with that person. Do you go on another date? And I'm talking about you because I feel like I had this conversation (laughs) with you. You And (laughs) the other thing is if you're presented with somebody to date and let's say a friend of a friend says, Hey, I've got somebody and here's their picture. And I think you guys would be perfect for each other. And you look at the picture that your friend, that your friend Cody sent you. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> not some third party, but your friend, do, and you're not really enamored with it. Do you go on the date? Because let me stop you before you answer that question. Yeah, I, go. You, you seem to tell me that you would. But I had a friend recently tell me, you don't owe anybody anything. And no, if you're not enamored or there, don't mm-hmm. do it. You're wasting okay. not only their time, but yours. 
I hear you. In the current situation and state that I am in right now, You're I'm in going to New York. To- I, <laughs> I meant mental state, not actual physical state. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I wanted I am, to bring you back down to earth, but you're here. But no, she's up in the clouds, honey, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on these dates because I need to put myself back out there to explore what it is that I like. Because I don't know anymore what what I want to do on a date because I've been on a relation, in a relationship for... Uh, X amount of time. So I think that for me personally, it's perfectly fine for me to go out on these dates and explore because I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't, I can't, darling. I can't. (laughs) So I'm going on these dates because I need to, I need to find out what these boys are all about in 2023 as opposed to 2020. And for me, and I hear you, and that's, I love that answer, Cody. It's really honest. And if I was to relate to what you're saying, Mm -hmm. I will just talk about, we had a recent guest on the show, Lamont White, and I went on his show post Uh our show called Shoot Your Shot, which is Mm -hmm. a live Instagram live show. And I was the subject of the show. Like, in other words, Lamont was asking me questions. Yeah, people I love were Lamont. writing it. A lot of people wrote into that show based that saw me that night, or a handful of people did. No, and a lot. <laughs> there were certain, <laughs> so you know what? It, and it was it was exciting. It was really exciting to be on that end of it, and to be. On the other hand of it, I was telling a friend, I was out last week, and I was saying, you know, a lot of people wrote in, I kind of felt this need to respond to everybody, even though I wasn't necessarily interested initially, necessarily (laughs) by maybe what they wrote or what I was seeing in the pictures. And I think my friend said, you're too nice, you're feeling guilty. And he's kind of right. And um. While I felt like maybe I should have, I don't know that we should always feel succumb to respond to everybody that, you know, comes our way. Because in the end, you really have to connect with those that you are interacting with. And there has to be some chemistry going on. And if there isn't, I do think you shouldn't waste each other's time in the end. And I hear you. I hear you, but I don't think it's a waste of time for me. I definitely reflect and tell these gentlemen that I'm going out on these dates with that I am recently out of a relationship so that they are are aware. I keep them uh, I keep them up to date on my emotional state so that they can know how I feel and what's going on with me as far as, I try and be as responsible and respectful as possible in these relationships. So I <clears throat> I hope that I'm not hurting anybody. I hope that when I go on these dates that they understand that it's just some me exploring what dating is like now, honestly. I love it. And watching us live, Matt, who was our guest, says you got to take care of you. <laughs> Thank Good you, Matt. Advice, Matt. <laughs> yeah. We forgot to ask Matt if he's used any of his toys. That was supposed to be our question to Matt. I like, asked have him. you actually has I asked he used them, but, them on him? But he kind of like dodged all around it. He just said yep. Oh, he just said yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bryce also nice. watching us live. Yep. So we got our answer there. That's a quick, simple yep. Bryce says, I say a simple thank you if there is not a mutual attraction when guys message me. And yeah, I say a simple thank you too. Sometimes guys can be pretty persistent, particularly after if you've been on shoot your shot, but just saying on that. <laughs> but moving on to our final segment. Let's, let's see keep this conversation. <laughs> let's keep this conversation going because it's a it's I feel like it is loaded. And we want to do our favorite segment that we didn't get to last week. And it's called Thirst Trap. It's it's produced by a uh, straight up gay porn this week they are asking the questions and i put it in the comments section i'll put it on tags live episode 513 out of these 12 the best shot 
our photo of the week. There's some really good ones in this one. Our job in an auditory podcast is to vividly describe who got our winner. And do you have one, Cody? I do. I want to say I hit up Tiago Fox on Grinder or Scrub Ooh, or something like that. There's too many good ones on this one. <laughs> right? So, because uh, he's hot as hell. And this is me shooting my shot. So I hope he hears this. Um, Tiago, I think you're beautiful. And <laughs> respond to my DM or wherever. I don't know where it is that I actually hit him up, but he is beautiful. He It's a very simple um, selfie. He's He's basically standing in a room with a scully on and he's got the like a thick beard and a tone type body and gorgeous tattoos and on a wreck cock and he's got the biggest vein in his cock it's so delicious so tiago fox is my vote for this week <laughs> well i well you? i agree with you and please put that you need to click on his name right this second and vote will you it's do that bottom. will i go on oh yes do that. We want everyone to vote. So while Thiago, my goodness, hot, right below him, Braxton Cruz is shooting his an eye at me, and it's not his real eyes. <laughs> my goodness, looking delicious. Yeah, that's also coming, Alex Inc. We just had our Matt Heft on the show with some really good tats on, and he's also giving us some beautiful tats. And a delicious dick, and he might even get mine. Um, of course, as always, Raheem Shabazz looks delicious, but I think I'm going to land on Reese XXXL, who's leaning back on a bed, who looks like a total bodybuilder, who may be of the Asian persuasion. He's next to a Buddha. That's all I can assume, but he is deliciously built and. I just, he's got these thick thighs and a dick that uh, of death. And I just want to climb on top of him because it's that delicious. He's bronzed out like the statue next to him, the Buddha. And he gets my vote for the week. And I'm going down and voting for Reese right this second. Uh, what are people saying? The people are saying that. Wait, can I stop you real quick? Go Are ahead. you Thiago? Yeah, I was Thiago. He's number one. FYI. Oh, currently, for the currently win. just that's just currently. <laughs> so calm it down, everyone. Calm down. Bryce is on my team, and so does so is Jin. They both say Thiago. So he's very popular. Okay. He's a bottom too. So call me baby. <laughs> <laughs> Call me any day. Okay, got it. All right. This has been so much fun. We want to thank yes. our special guest, Matt Heft of silkarts.com. Uh, we will post this on our uh, tankspodcast.com reference episode 513. You can follow my co-host, Cody Maurice Doggett. He's a life coach. Follow him at KMD Coaching. KMD Coaching on Instagram or follow his personal account at Mr. Maurice. Mr. Maurice. Follow me. I am underscore Steve V. Hey guys, we've got a brand new podcast. It's called Of a Certain Age. Yes. We are on episode number two. You want to check it out. It's wherever you get your podcast Of a Certain Age or Oaka O A C A. Get it on every streaming platform. Follow us on Instagram of a certain age pod, P O D, of a certain age pod, P O D. We drop episodes every Wednesday next week. We are live in Mexico, in Puerto Vallarta, more importantly, with a brand new live podcast. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned and follow us on our socials because it's going to be really lit. And in the meantime, yes. Cody, continue having hot, hot. Gay. Gay. Sure. Love you guys.